Now, one one more thing about how um, we're going to make the connection of the induced EMF with the non-Coulomb electric field. And this is something that um, we, we typically um, discuss extensively in an upper level electricity and magnetism class, not really uh, at an introductory physics level class. So, so as I said, the induced EMF is minus d phi, the magnetic flux over the change in time. Now, we saw at the beginning of, um, uh, of the chapter where we started talking about electrodynamics, the e EMF, by definition, is a closed path integral of the force per unit charge dot dl. So this, this f, this is a force per unit charge. Uh, now, if the only thing we have, so if the only thing we have is an electric force, then of course, if you take the, if you divide the electric force with the charge, what we get is the electric field. And then this becomes the closed path integral of E dot DL. Now, in the case of Faraday's law, the electric field that we have is the non-Coulomb electric field. So now I have the E and C. So one way to write Faraday's law using the definition of the EMF and the fact that I have a non-Coulomb electric field is the following. The closed path integral of the non-Coulomb electric field dot dl is equal to minus the rate of change of the magnetic flux as a function of time. This is the integral form. So this is Faraday's law. In the integral form. And we can also write, of course, Faraday's law in the differential form. The curl of the non-Coulomb electric field is minus the partial derivative of B with respect to time. This is also Faraday's law, but this is in the differential form. Now, there is one important comment that I, I want to make um, about Faraday's law in the integral form. This is a closed path integral and the calculation of the flux does include another integral. Let me, let's add one more board so we can see that better. So this is the closed path integral of the non-Coulomb electric field dot dl equals to minus. Now, I will use the definition of the flux, okay? Now, as I said, this is a closed path integral. And this one, this is a surface integral. Now I'm going to use 
Uh, I'm gonna show you this in the loop that we had. I can remind you. We had the magnet. And the magnet was moving. Now, here is how we're gonna do these calculations in this particular case. This is a calculation of, this is the flux. Okay, this, this surface integral, this is the magnetic flux. And this will be, this is not a closed surface integral, okay? This is just the area that is enclosed by your, um, by the wire. Now, because this is not a closed surface, there is an ambiguity in the definition of dA. Okay, you can if this is if you can think of this is the the area the dA. Then we can. There are two ways to define dA. You can define it as pointing to the right. You can define it as pointing to the left. Again, if you remember when we have a closed surface then by convention, the infinitely small area vector dA points away from that closed surface. Now, because this is not a closed surface, it's an open surface, we have this ambiguity for the definition of dA. Let's say I, I choose to have dA, the dA vector pointing to the right. This is my dA. Now, once we define what is the vector dA, we have to do the path integration in a way that is consistent with the, 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 our choice of dA. And with the right hand rule, okay, you will need to use the right hand rule. If you have your thumb point in the direction of dA, then the way that your fingers curl will show you the direction with which you will do the integration. If you use the right hand and your thumb points in the direction of dA, your fingers will curl in a way that they point towards you here and they go into the page here. So you will do this will be the DL vector at the top. The DL vector at the bottom um, will point into the page. And the way that you do this integration, uh, the closed path integral will be consistent with how you define the, the, the vector DA. Now, I, I can do one more picture to show you in, in, a, in a different orientation. If, okay, this is the loop, and let's say I am here, and this is, okay, this is me, this is my eye, and I'm looking at it. Um, this is how I will define the top view, which is this one. Top view, the DA vector, I can see the DA vector points towards me. So the dA vector will point out of the page. And if I have my thumb pointing out of the page and I curl the fingers of my right hand, then the dL vector will go this way. And you will need to do the integration in the, um, in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, this will be the path of your integration of the left side with the DA on the right side that goes out of the page. I do need to mention, you know, do you have to choose DA as pointing to the right? No, you don't. You can make any choice you want. You can have DA pointing to the left. That's fine. The important thing to, to remember, once you define what you choose for DA, you need to use the right hand rule to find out how you will do the path integral. Now, of course, you can do it the other way around. If you want, you can first choose how you will do the path integral, and then that will show you what is the direction of dA. It doesn't really matter. 
just make sure that the way that you do both integrals is consistent with the right hand rule.